Hi guys, Andy Meyer here. We're going to talk about my analog insert rack here and my workflow and how I apply it live. First of all, we're going to come right down to my 500 frames. Um, we're going to talk about the 535 compressor right here. This 535 compressor uh, I have inserted on my base DIs. I use two base DIs. Uh, one I drive a little harder and get a little crunchy. And, uh, and I insert these with parallel compression and the weight it adds to the bass guitar. It's almost like you're hearing another octave. It's a fantastic compressor. Yeah, nothing has brought out the bass guitar and the richness and notes and definition like this compressor. And I've tried everything in this rack. It's really, really great. And again, the 500 uh, frames, uh, the power supplies are robust. Uh, I've got one that's just getting a 50% load and these are packed. So, that's a wonderful thing too. You're getting proper voltage into all your, all your rack gear. On this bottom 500 frame, we have the uh, tape emulators, the 542s, and I'm using four of those on my guitars. Both rigs are uh, stereo rigs, so that's there. And then number five and six, I'm out of tape mode just using silk, and we're doing that and driving it very hard, and that's on the snare top. Gives it a nice crack, and it sits really nice in the mix. We have the 5059 summing mixer, and I've got my guitars and percussion going through that stuff. I want really forward and right in your face, and it's a, it's a fantastic uh, summing mixer. And I have a little bit of red silk on there just to give it a little edge. We have a 5043, and that has been significant to me. I've got that in my percussion group. Terry is very dynamic, and also there's a lot of chimes and bells and, and, and intimate things that this really brought to life. I literally had to turn my chimes, bells, and, uh, and all my percussion overhead down about 10 dB because it just sits in the mix now with this beautiful lush analog compressor inserted on it. And then for fun here, this is something I started doing in 2012. We have an older 5014. It's a field generator. It, it's a, basically a surround piece. So I insert that on uh, and use it. Um, as an aux and for segues or uh, if there's a string patch on a key that leads into another song or a wind noise and track I'll apply that and it literally in the arena will sound like it's wrapping around you so there's a lot of good fun right there on my drive we have mastering gear inserted and that is the uh, portico 2 master bus processor and I use it just in straight middle side mode and, uh, and drive that and get some spread. Depending on the arena or the day, I can make it a little wider or a little more narrow. So that's been fantastic. The Shelford channel I have on Justin, we take him 100% analog from stage, old school up the snake, right into the Shelford channel, which feeds the 5045, which feeds line in on the Portico 2 channel. That gives me two different styles of compression on him and it gives me a little more EQ control so I can rely straight on analog gear for him 100%. When you apply all this analog the proper way, uh, you can hear more depth, more width, you can hear more finite parts without forcing them. That goes back to what I was saying about percussion, being able to turn down all these intricate parts that I was having to drive real hard. I don't have to do that anymore. So basically all this analog gear is, in, is inserted on groups and inputs so that every single thing in a, in a hundred plus input count is seeing something analog and it just makes my workflow easier it's easier to mix it just sounds way better 